Prostate MRI. It's new. It's hip. It's happening. It's relevant. Let's get ready to rumble. Because this is the second leading cause of male cancer death. An MR now and is going to have an even bigger impact on the management of this disease. There are a quarter of a million cases in the U.S. alone, and there are 161,360 new patients each year. There are 26,730 deaths in 2017 from prostate cancer, according to the American Cancer Society. So it's no wonder that we are looking for better methods of diagnosis and treatment. Initially, we diagnosed prostate cancer with some relatively rudimentary techniques, like your finger, the digital rectal exam, which nobody, including myself, likes getting when they go to see their internist for their yearly exam. In addition, it's not a very sensitive or specific screening technique. That's also true for self-breast examination. The serum PSA, or prostate-specific antigen. We know that the normal prostate makes PSA. So if your prostate gets bigger, as in hyperplasia, as in benign hyperplasia, the more prostate you have, the more PSA you make. So the PSA elevation in itself is not a reliable sign in most instances that you have prostate cancer. So we hope to share with you over the next several hours in mini vignettes, snippets that you can look at very briefly, what we are capable of without entering somebody's rear end with an endorectal coil. In other words, you don't need an endorectal coil to do proper diagnostic and screening prostate MRI, nor do you need a three Tesla magnet. This is a, an endorectal coil showing you the prostate gland in all its glory in a seven-year-old 1.5 Tesla machine, but you don't even need a new machine. You need some very basic techniques to diagnose and screen prostate cancer, and they include high-quality T2 spinaco imaging with good external coil technology and high-quality diffusion imaging. If you have that, you can do prostate MR. Let's move on, shall we?